This feels so pleasant to touch. This was so relaxing to do, I especially love the sound of the water. Oh my god, it's working! This is how the paper came out. I love these fabric thingies inside them. And I'm surprised on how flexible and foldable it is. I really thought that it would break when I tried to fold them into envelopes. For my paper pulp I used fabric scraps because I have a lot of fabric scraps from all of my sewing projects and I mixed them in with newspaper but you can also use old paper. I started by cutting the fabric scraps into smaller scraps. This took a while but with crafts like this I like to go slow and to enjoy the process of what I'm doing. And then you need a mixer. I filled the mixer with warm but not boiling water, just warm water and I added the fabric scraps to it. And then I made a fabric scrap smoothie. Don't put too much fabric scraps or newspaper in your mixer at once because it will break the mixer. And then I collected all of my pulp into a bin. I also added some extra warm water to the bin. I wanted my paper to have something extra, so I added these fibers inside. I just took a fabric that had a lot of fiber and I cut them up and mixed them with water. This is what the pulp looks like once it has been smoothied. I also added half a newspaper to the pulp and then the pulp is ready for paper making. I used a decal to make this paper. You need two separated frames of the same size. My dad made this for me but you can also use picture frames. I added chicken wire and a mesh pack to one side of the frame so it would function as a sieve. I really enjoyed playing around in the pulp. Layer two frames on each other with the one with the chicken wire as the under frame and then you just get into the water and you take on a lot of pulp and a lot of water and you pull it out. Then I removed all of this pulp laying on the side of the frame. And then I used a sponge to squeeze as much water out of the paper as possible. I'm using a natural sea sponge. I bought a whole bunch of those when I was traveling to Florida and this is an old one. I don't know if it makes any difference but I just like using those. This already starts to look a whole lot like paper. Then I squeezed more water out of the paper. You need to get as much water as possible out of this paper. And now you and need then to get I laid the paper them off the decal. The and for me, this was really get them dry. The I left them that I watched for like 20 hours. hours or I really had to shake the decal. But eventually it fell, and I just had to fix the upper corner of the paper. But this was, this was quite a good one. And then I used my natural spongebob to squeeze more water out of this paper for the last time. I actually got a lot of water out of this paper. And then I laid them onto the heater to get them dry. I left them there for like 24 hours or something. I can't lay them outside because it's minus three outside at the moment. So yeah, not a good idea. Now you notice that the paper is kind of gray, but once it dry, this turned almost completely white. Once the pieces of paper are completely dry, you can easily pull them off from the sheets. My papers were a bit frumpy, so I ironed them to make them more flat and it really worked. 
like I didn't like them that much before I ironed them but the moment I ironed them I was really happy because it really looked like you know, nice flat paper I also make this pinkish paper with a pink fiber because I love pink so I went looking for all my red and pinkish scraps and I cut them up into a mixer, I added some water and I made a pink smoothie. I enjoy learning new crafts, it's maybe one of the few benefits that 2020 and all the problems had that I got time to learn new crafts. So I learned sewing and I really enjoy paper making, but I also looked something up about the history of paper making because you know it's interesting to know where this craft came from. Well, the first kind of paper known to the world is papyrus. I think everybody knows that from the Egypt, but that's not really paper like the paper we know today. The paper as we know today is invented in China and it is credited to Shai Lun, if I pronounce that right, probably I don't. They made the paper as we know it today and they made it from fibers, fishing net and old racks and bamboo trees. So yeah, paper was invented in China. I didn't know that. I probably learned it on school, but I didn't pay a lot of attention in school. So yeah, you learn something new every day. Here I am finishing up my pink paper. This came out to have a really nice shade of pink, what I like. Because pink is kind of my color. So I am really glad with the end result. It does need an iron, so I do advise you to iron it. That will make it nicely flat. There are a lot of fun additions you can do with paper. I also saw a lot of people adding newspaper scraps at the end on the decal. So the moment you pull the decal out of the water and you squeeze a little bit of water out, you can add newspaper scraps and this gives a really cool effect. I also saw a lot of people adding dried flowers. But you know, it's winter now and I don't know where to get flowers, so I'm not going to add it. Maybe if I do a summer edition of this, I will add some dried flowers. And I'm going to use this paper to write to my pen pals. I used to have a lot of pen pals 3-4 years ago, but I lost contact with most of them. And now I'm only working part-time and at home and I have some time. So, so I found myself a few new pen pals. And they will get a letter on this homemade paper, what I personally think is very cool, because the paper is made with love. I folded a few sheets of my homemade paper into envelopes, and because my paper was already a square, this was really easy to do. You just take the corners and you fold them to the middle, and you use glue to set three of them stuck, you know, to each other, in love, forever. <laughs> 